Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and clearly I am losing to the staring contest with the back of my eyelids So I am headed home ladies and gentlemen and I got to come back here early a couple of uh, great things I think that's happened. Let's see here. Yeah, so if anyone was missing out on I was ranting like crazy on Instagram, but here I'm gonna show you all something this is from yesterday so this is uh, yesterday, and this is the text calls and transfers. So we see here 41 transfers and 41 calls on a campaign. We started this probably, uh, what time did we start this? Like at 6 p.m. or so, and it's a campaign that we're doing, and clearly I'm doing this for uh, sheer sake of being able to document some of the stuff that I'm doing, especially in this changing market. And I'll talk about some conversations I had with sellers today and i'll give you kind of insight on what's going on and for me it's really 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 interesting when when you talk to a lot of people there's a young guy who hopped on an instagram account and he asked the question if i'm starting off right if i'm starting off what do you think is the best thing to do right and my response to that particular person was uh one understand uh marketing and then understand sales right because sales is one thing marketing is a totally different thing so you got to understand both to be successful uh, which one's more important in the real estate space i'm a firm believer that marketing is more important than the actual sales component um why is because the actual life cycle of a real estate transaction is so long that you know typically it's it, you have something called a dom constraint so it's a lot longer so what that means is that you got to be able to float a lot of cash over a course of a period so if you understand at least the marketing component you can bridge that gap by at least selling even the services or leads or forwarding the leads to people who can work them to be able to supplement and offset that actual cost and that's what i mean by actually understanding that so again that's my opinion and i think it's a great thing so that's what I got for you guys and gals. And that, you gotta overcommit, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I know people says don't, you know, but, you, but really to push yourself, you gotta be able to overcommit. Why is because magically you get more stuff done. That's that's one of the things that I've always, um, you know, I go through a channel overcommit and undercommit, right? So depending on what it is. So typically Q1 and Q3, I really overcommit. And then I fulfill stuff um, going into Q2 and Q3. So Q1 is literally like sales and stuff, right? Sales and conversion that I work on a lot. And then the other component, when I go into Q2, that's when we try to figure out the back end stuff, which is a lot easy in any business. So that's all I got. I'm driving here. I'm going to turn this off. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.